Picture this, if you will. You're at your home in your Omaha, Nebraska suburb, watching this video on your phone or TV in the living room late on a winter night. All of a sudden, you have an intense craving for your favorite Ben & Jerry's ice cream. Maybe it's a tonight dough, change the world, or mint chocolate chance. In order to satisfy your craving for this $9 ice cream, you decide to DoorDash it, only to realize that the delivery fee is $13, exceeding your original price. You think to yourself, ah, what the hell, man, I'll just drive to the grocery store. So you get outside, walk to your car, put your keys in the ignition, and start it, only to realize that the exhaust is extremely loud. Some bastard just stole your catalytic converter. I know because this happened to me as well. In your heightened state of mind, you decide to Uber, but the trip to the nearest grocery store two miles away costs $10. Again, more than the ice cream. You spot the Omaha Metro app on your phone and remember, hey, the bus exists. No ice cream can fill the empty void that you now feel, but at least you can get to the store and you decide to go outside. You continue on your quest for your stomach churning lactose. The bus stop is a 20 minute walk away and you're tearing up from the bitter cold air, embarrassed that this is your last resort. On your walk, you're navigating identical looking houses, relying on your phone for navigation. Finally, an ancient vehicle pulls up right in front of you. The driver smiles and beckons you to his domain. You feel the warm air from the bus bless you as you walk in. You ask the driver, wiping cold tears from your face, if it stops at the hy V store on 156th Street. He nods, thankfully, and you sit down for the three minute ride. After your quick bus ride, you walk into the fluorescent lit grocery store and track down the ice cream aisle after his long and arduous quest. In a shocking turn of events, you fall to your knees in agony as you find out that hy V doesn't in fact carry Ben and Jerry's ice cream. A bunch of questions probably rose in your mind as you read through that awful tragedy. Why was the grocery store two miles away from your house? Do buses actually come that late or are you just making that up? And finally, why did the bus take so damn long to arrive? Also, you couldn't just wait for tomorrow to eat ice cream. No, I mean, that's not really a question, right? But the, the problems that you're inquiring about are due to the fact that the person in the story does not live in a transit-oriented development, or TOD. This term describes an urban, walkable, mixed-use community that is accessible by diverse forms of public transit. While the person in the story did, did indeed utilize bus service to get to his local grocery store, the presence of transit doesn't really qualify his suburban neighborhood as a TOD, since it doesn't focus on pedestrian structure. It took them a solid 20 minutes to get to a bus stop in the first place, and even then, they got lucky that the bus wasn't even late to pick them up. TOD benefits people of all income brackets for a multitude of reasons. In a 2006 study, it was suggested that lower income households were more likely to consider the cost of housing in deciding to live in a TOD, and that 52% of respondents stated that they moved to a TOD due to the quality of the neighborhood. Think about it. If you live in a walkable community, you live close by to essential businesses and services like grocery stores, banks, pharmacies, taquerias, bakeries, and of course Ben and Jerry's ice cream shops. That sounds like a high quality neighborhood to me. TODs are important to support higher frequency transit service and are likely to foster walkable communities. So developments within that half mile walking distance to a metro, light rail, BRT, or commuter rail platform facilitates transportation to places like medical centers and baseball stadiums. Basically, you can go wherever your heart desires, all without starting your ignition and worrying about your missing catalytic converter. With great transit-oriented development, you don't have to own a car, pay for the often changing gas price, and obtain expensive car insurance. It's also important that TOD is mixed use as well. You can have an apartment block with a density of like a thousand people per square mile, but when they all have to take the bus to the grocery store that's miles away, there's no point in that. Instead, having a 5 or one apartment building with a Trader Joe's leasing the bottom floor would be way more beneficial to those living there. In the historical context, TOD also seeks to revitalize neighborhoods, particularly those of color, which were demolished to make way for interstate highways that were meant to serve majority white suburbs of large US cities in the Eisenhower administration in the 1950s. Notable examples of highways built on the ground of once present neighborhoods are the Interstate 980 in Oakland, which Mayor Libby Schaaf called an injustice, and the Interstate 490 loop in Rochester, which itself ironically has had a 2.7 mile portion demolished for development of a six acre walkable neighborhood. 
All that aside, this channel will be discussing, analyzing, and critiquing the ideas within a half mile of every rail and bus rapid transit stop of major cities. In order to determine generally if the community around the transit stop is a TOD, I'll assess it using the five Ds. Density, land use diversity, urban design, destination accessibility, and distance to transit. I myself am a resident of the SF Bay Area, so I'll try to make some IRL content for you and actually visit the stations that I'm analyzing to give you a feel of how good or bad, and in most cases it's pretty bad, uh, the area around the stop is for transit users. A TOD might look good on paper or on Google Earth, but it could be revealed to be very poorly implemented when you visit it in real life. And so that's why it's best to get my feet on the ground in some cases. You're probably at home watching this video, or you're at work, maybe waiting for the bus, or at school, or sitting in gridlock traffic. Wherever you may be, I'd like to personally thank you for clicking on this channel and giving it a shot, and I'll see you next time.